The Vixen. And, uh, what was Vixen like uh, when she wasn't getting in fights? <laughs> I love the Vixen. And you know, the funny thing is, I said this to my crowds like um, at bars the first three or four episodes when I was touring. Um, I was like, I love Vixen. She was always so sweet to me. She hit on me a few times. Oh, um, really? Which was, which was kind of funny. How did that um, go down? I, I, you know, and several of the girls did. And I like, I was like, oh, oh girl. <laughs> um, Wait, they hit on you during the show? Yeah. Oh, and they were they like, they did. Yo, Cameron. Miss Cameron, wanna... Cameron's a snack. You know what I mean? Calorie, oh, okay, calorie, yeah. calorie did on the show, but then, <laughs> then Vixen did a couple times too um, but no the, th the, the misunderstanding about Vixen is that you know she's very confrontational and I don't think she's like that all the time she's always been so sweet to me and every time I see her you know Cracker and I were doing a show at Roscoe's and Vixen came to see us and sat upstairs with us and she's so chill um, so you know what I mean like she has her moments but she, that's, that's not much like that's not how she is all the time what was that walkout like on the reunion did you all gag I was gagged. You know what's funny is I told people I told people the other day I thought that it was supposed to happen. I thought that it was talked about beforehand. I thought that it was something that may have been produced that Vixen would leave and then come back. Mm. And then once we left, it was like, no, she really left. Like she's upstairs packing. She's leaving. She's gone. Wow. And I was like, oh shit. I thought that she was coming back to the reunion. I did not know that she was going to stay gone. That she was not coming back. Yeah, it was a gag for that sure. That is a gag. The gag of the season. <laughs> a gag for gag's sake. Look Monet Exchange. You had to lip sync against SpongeBob Tom. Exchange. SpongeBob Exchange. I like that's like a SpongeBob Exchange. Version, that's a version of that sponge look, Lady Red. That's like the winter sponge. Uh huh. Winter sponge. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what was it like to lip sync against her? Well, like I said, the song was. Um, uh, Lizzo. Lizzo. So I was a little worried because I'm like, oh, this is a soulful song. I was like, Miss Monet's gonna serve. So I was worried. Um, and then of course she like left the runway, and I think everybody was like, where the fuck did she go? What happened? Right. Um, and but then she did her like sliding split, and I was like, oh, I'm going home. I was like, she's turning tricks over there. You know what's funny is like um, they asked if I saw the butterflies with Asia, and I was like, I didn't because I was worried about what I was doing. And it was the same thing with Monet. Is like you didn't see all those tricks and things. I didn't things see all the tricks, <laughs> but I could hear her doing shit over there. I'm like, what is she doing? She turned something over there. I was like, what is she doing? So yeah, I was scared. That was like a prop extravaganza, that one, but it, it still didn't save her. I guess not. I don't know. A good hair flip can, get, a good, can go a, a long hair way. Flip. Hair toss, check my nails, baby, how you feeling? <laughs> <laughs> like a winner, you did it. <laughs> Hello, yeah. Uh, all right, she mourned the season at the finale. Look at Miss Cracker. Miss Cracker. Uh, now, you guys were close on the show? We were, yeah. yeah. What's a moment you guys shared that we didn't see? Um, oh, 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 so the um, the pancake gig, where we all had to make the waffles or the pancakes, whatever the fuck was going on. <laughs> right. So we're the all, weirdest challenge yeah, of the season. The weirdest challenge of the season. Uh, so we were all had our pancakes laid up, and um, so when they announced that, I think Asia won that challenge, and so after Asia won, and we were all standing there, and the cameras cut off, Cracker looks down at her pancake, pancake, and I forget what her pancake's name was, but she said the pancake's name, and she goes, you're never going to be good at anything in life. You're never going to be good enough. And just I, she said something way funnier, because I'm not as funny <laughs> as she is. But she said something, and I laughed so hard. They literally couldn't bring the cameras back up for a couple seconds, because Rue was just staring at me like, can you shut the fuck up? Can you quit? <laughs> I, I was laughing so hard at Cracker, they had to pause filming because it was so hysterical. <laughs> um, was it hard sending her home since you guys were close? Yeah, it sucked. It sucked. I thought that was the that was the third time. So at that point, I was like, I said this in the reunion, which I don't know if it was shown or not. Um, I said, do I throw it? Do I throw the lip sync at this point? It's my third time here. Wow. I've had a good run. I didn't expect to make it this far. Cracker is clearly going to be a fan favorite. Do I throw this lip sync? And I said, no, I can't because um, it wouldn't do me or my fans any justice to not try. Um, so I just still did the same effort that I would any other time, knowing that I might send her home and knowing that she would be a fan favorite. And then once the show aired and seeing that she, you know, far surpassed me as fan favorite, I was like, fuck, they're going to hate me. <laughs> God, they're going to hate me. They're going to crucify me. But I was like, you know what? I still did my shit and I did as good as I could. So Because you might have wanted to go home, but your hair and your legs said otherwise. They said otherwise. a different story. And that's what your brain thinks a different story. You get out there, you start twirling. And it's like, okay, well, I guess I'm staying. <laughs> Look at her. 
Your tour mate, Miss Asia O'Hara. Asia O'Hara. So you guys, so she's having a lot of fun with you on the road. She is. She's asking people if they want to fuck you. She sure did. She is. The, pride, uh, the San Diego Pride game, girl. <laughs> oh, Lord. Um, I always have fun with Asia. She is... She's, she was the mother of the season. Yeah. So she's always looking out for everyone. Um, and the San Diego was so, I keep talking about that, but that's the first time that I really saw, because like I said, we don't get to tour a lot um, with each other, but now the Asia and Aquaria and I and Eureka are gonna be together. I get to interact with them a lot more. And Miss Asia on that microphone was serving it in San Diego, talking to that whole crowd of people. And she was literally like just entertaining them. And it's so awesome to watch somebody be that confident on stage and with a microphone and no music, no nothing. It's just her engaging with the crowd. It's really awesome to see somebody have that much confidence in themselves. With you guys all on tour together, you're doing group numbers. So you're really getting in, yeah, like getting are. to spend some real time with your sisters. Yeah, we do. So we have a lot of choreography. And I think back to prior seasons and I think back to other Work the Worlds and other tours that are going on. And it's like, we have the most choreography that I can remember yeah. of any like touring girls. Um, and I think that shows how strong of a top four that we were is because we have, you know, a chance uh, doing a lot of our choreography. And there's a lot of expectations for us to do well because, uh, of course, Todrick served us the most choreography ever for yeah. Drag Race history, her story, um, that there is that expectation of us to dance now. And I think it's, that shows how strong of a top four we were that we can pull that off. Is Asia doing a butterfly themed number on the tour? You know, I, not right now. Okay. I think I may have heard some uh, rumors in the wind. Uh, uh, from River on the East Wind that she would maybe do something like that. I don't know. I don't want to quote that. I think I may have heard sure. that, so we'll just have to pay attention and see. I mean, I'm ready for a butterfly ring, butterfly t-shirt, mechanical butterflies, or yes. butterflies on strings, whatever she it takes. Some, you gotta she needs, she needs do that drag race thing and own every moment that you were on TV. <laughs> like mine. Hi, hello, how are you? Exactly. <laughs> All right. Look <laughs> Your Where's girl, your smoking buddy, your Tennessee sister, sister, your double safe sis. Yes. I love her so much. Um, she was the first queen to really um, kind of try to get to know me. Mm -hmm. And when I say try to get to know me, I mean she really pushed herself on me. Okay. And she was like, you're going to be my friend, goddammit, um, and you're going to open up to me. And it takes people doing that to me to open up because I don't open up easily. And so for her to like poke and prod at me for a long time and finally get me to open up, um, and you can see our friendship progress through the season because she was the person that I would go to for help or uh, for strength when I felt um, not confident in myself. She was like, she's like, bitch, you're good enough. Look, you're on RuPaul's fucking Drag Race. She's like, realize that you are worthy and you are good enough to be here. So she was always my um, my talking head back here telling me that I was good enough and that I, I, I deserved to be there. What was that moment like after that we didn't see after you guys were double saved? Um, both of us were very emotional. I was very emotional because I would have traded places with her, with her in a heartbeat. Mm. Um, if I would have you know, stayed and not her, I would have traded places because I just, I'm such a fan of Eureka in general. Um, but it was very emotional because you know, a double Shantae, especially between two best friends, because if you saw Untucked, uh, we had that moment out where we were talking beforehand um, about you know my dad and our home lives and her mom, and then for us to lip sync against each other, it was very emotional. And then we both got to stay, which was even more emotional. I know, so it, was, it was a very good uh, moment for us as best friends. Yeah. And are you guys uh, uh, spending great time together on this tour? And like, what is Eureka like on the road? Eureka is so chill. She's so much fun. And we were just in Boston together, actually, um, on with several of the other girls for a season 10 um, dragathon tour. And Eureka and I went to the aquarium together. Oh, that's nice. And then um, <laughs> I had some friends. Uh, Zach, uh, a friend of mine, is in Aladdin uh, on Broadway in Boston right now. And uh, he gave us tickets. So we went to see the Aladdin Broadway musical. So we really got to have sister time, which doesn't happen a lot. So that yeah. was really fun to get to hang out with her outside of drag in general. That's good. Yeah. And how are her knees? Everything's good? Her knees are good. She is still serving and twirling and twerking. And and we haven't had no any knee issues yet, so I think she's okay. God bless. Because yeah. <laughs> yeah. all of drag America is like, please keep those please knees keep safe. Please keep the knees safe. You know, I, I, <laughs> she's eating enough protein now, so I think she's good. Though I bet she is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, last but not least, Loga. Miss Aquaria, 
The reigning queen. The reigning queen. I have been a fan of Aquaria long before the show. Um, as were a lot of people on social media. Yeah. Um, she's so talented and she's such a genius. I mean, she's literally a genius. And to be that young and that talented at everything that she does, she's a dancer, she's a great makeup artist. Um, she has her album out now and she's singing. Um, and just how she carried herself on the show, you know, she had a few missteps as we all did, um, you know, a couple diva moments. But other than that, to be that young and that poised, God, she's such a fucking star. Yeah. Dude, did you feel like you got to know Aquaria? Because as an audience member, yeah. and even someone who's interviewed her a couple yeah. of times, I feel like I know her least yeah. of any, I feel like she's almost like uh, Britney Spears in that, where she's been doing it for so long and so young that you get the public persona, right. which is very controlled. Yeah. Did you Do you see that, or is that different for you since you're one of her Drag Race sisters? You know what? <sighs> I think I feel like I get maybe a little bit of a different version of Aquaria than a lot of people do, um, but not that much different. She, right. She's 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 very funny, which I don't. I, nobody expected her to be funny. Nobody right. expected her to win Snatch Game, and so she's really clever and she's really funny with like the Wakanda fist joke that she had in the reunion, like all the stuff that she does. Um, but the one thing that I remember about Aquaria is that she texted me after the show and she said, "Miss Cameron, I'm so sorry that I didn't, you know." try to talk to you more on set. Mm. She goes, you're really, because we, we hung out several times in New York, because you know we're both with Voss for management. Right. Um, so we're with each other a lot now, and we're hanging out on tour. And she's like, you're fucking fun. She goes, I love hanging out with you. And that was the thing that she was like, you're really cool, and I wish I would have hung out with you more on the show. But that's cool now, because we get to tour, and we get to hang out with each other. And like we're just constantly kikiing wherever we are, because I love Aquaria, because she's such a dope. She's, <laughs> she's such a dope. She's really fun, but she just says some dumb shit sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> and it just makes you cackle because it's like, girl, you're stupid. <laughs> but it just makes her so endearing. So I don't know if people get to see that as much as I do, but she's really fun. She's really funny. Great. Yeah. Well, you certainly have plenty of time to get to know her I do now. more because with the same manager, and you're going to be a lot on the same tour, sweetie. All over the world. Australia, UK, we're coming for you guys. All right. Yeah. Yes. Well, thank you so much, Cameron. Thank you did you. it. You did it. Give her a round of applause. <laughs> Yeah. She speaks, America. She, she speaks. speaks, and she said hello to and everyone hello to everyone in Hi. the studio. Hello, how are you? <laughs> really, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you for taking time to come to the beach house, Thank sweetie. You. Always Lovely. a delight to see you, and we can't wait to see what you're doing. Thank you. For the rest of all of your drag career. Yeah, let's talk again in a year and see oh, where I'm Yes, at. we are always going to be here for yeah. you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you to my beach beauty, Miss Lady Red. <laughs> and thanks to all of you watching. We'll see you next time on Hey Queen and Look Up. Bye, baby. Yeah. Oh yeah. Give it to me, Cameron. Uh huh. Give it to me. And Lady Red, she's out there. Uh huh. Oh, Look Up.